Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and of course financial service providers are interested in XRP and digital assets, aka cryptocurrency. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Take a look at this headline. And by the way, I gotta say again, I know I said this yesterday, but it just, it, it seems like with each passing day, it becomes more and more true. There is too much to talk about. As I was uh, mapping out the videos I'm gonna make for, for today, um, just as uh, late morning, early afternoon today, I just, there's so much that I'd like to talk about, but I can't do it all. So I map them all out. And then on top of that, I gotta pick up Moon Bay at the airport after I finish recording for the day. So busy, 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 but lots of cool stuff. This is a fun headline. Ripple releases 2019 report on blockchain and crypto. Says 75% of financial service providers interested in digital assets. I've also got a couple tweets from the XRP community um, and Weiss crypto ratings. Oh my God. Sometimes Weiss Crypto Ratings has foot and mouth syndrome. I'll be sharing that with you. And then there's this uh, piece from Cointelegraph that's titled, China's President Xi has credentialized cryptocurrency, says Novogratz. That's billionaire Michael Novogratz, very famous in the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So I'll be running for that, uh, through that one as well. Before we go any further, though, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel, because it will be the most productive thing that you do with your day. All right, let's dive in now. Three quarters of the financial service providers polled in Ripple's new survey indicate they are, quote, very too extremely interested in digital assets. Conducted by a third party in August and September, the survey polled 1,053 respondents across 21 countries, all of whom are directly involved with payment services at their organization. According to Ripple's report on the data, uh, the companies include retail bankers, digital bankers, payment aggregators, and money transmitters. Uh, more than a third of those respondents say they are in production in terms of implementing blockchain, and 27% say they're nearing actual implementa implementation. Um, and that that's one of the sentences that most caught my attention. Now, note that they did say implementing blockchain. That doesn't mean digital asset or cryptocurrency specifically, though. Uh, because again, if you think about it, the only cryptocurrency that is being used in the commercial production of anything in the whole world, bar none, is XRP. That's it. So there are other uh, projects out there that, yes, are indeed... They're in partnerships and this and that, and blockchains are getting used, but not the native coins themselves. XRP is the only one used in the commercial production of anything. But, uh, nonetheless, hey, adoption, got it. Although those numbers represent a minority, uh, the, the results of the survey indicate financial services providers are almost uniformly interested in exploring blockchain's potential, according to Ripple, which from my perspective isn't that surprising if there's a new technology and you can, you, you just you start like start to understand the implications of it, why would you not at least want to look into it further to see if this might perhaps benefit my company, right? And here's a quote: Not only do this year's respondents see greater market opportunities, and this is from Ripple, by the way. The majority of them, 97%, are either implementing or evaluating blockchain technology to capture these opportunities. They also express a stronger understanding of blockchain strengths than last year's respondents. Because, of course, this is not surprising, right? Because uh, blockchain, cryptocurrency, not going away. So they said 97% are either implementing or evaluating. What the hell are the other 3% doing? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so, so, some, some people out there are just a little apathetic, I would say. Anyway, and then uh, from Ripple, here's more. There's two bullet points now. Respondents see opportunity to double down in cross-border payments by both expanding existing services into new regions and introducing new services in existing regions. Next bullet point is they, they, they perceive a stronger demand in three of the top four cross-border payment services. Digital payments for goods and services, mass disbursements and remittances. Of the three, uh, remittances show the strongest jump in perceived demand, especially by respondents, who are in or near production with blockchain technology for payments. Now, it's not as surprising that those already uh, in blockchain would be, uh, you know, have that favorable of an opinion. And as it pertains to moving money around the world, one of the most obvious and most tremendous pain points is indeed moving money, uh, just moving money around the world and just transferring money from one fiat currency to another. 
there are better ways to do all sorts of things within the, uh, the the world of fintech, moving money around the planet. And Brett, in fact, Brett Garlinghouse he recently was talking. He said it more than once, but even recently he was talking in an interview about how uh, local payment rails within Mexico are better, uh, you know, um, as, as it pertains to like ACH in America versus what they're doing in Mexico. He said that uh, the payment ra- local payment rails in Mexico, fantastic, uh, not not as hot in uh, in the United States. And so, but even so, even with ACH being what it is, and Ripple having stated they can do it better, but actually Brad's the one that said that, uh, it's, it's not a big enough pain point to, to show up as uh, number one on the list of things to do, right? Anyway, uh, despite increasing interest in the sector, about 35% of respondents say they're concerned about the difficulty of integrating blockchain and digital assets, and 28% think integration is too expensive. I'd love to know specifically what type of platforms they're talking about. I do really, because I mean, it's a perception. Sometimes it really is nothing more than a perception, but I would love to know what data entered their heads to make them think that. Hmm, who knows? Anyway, similar levels of survey participants say they're concerned with regulatory issues. 35% say regulations are too uncertain, and 32% say they're too prohibitive. And again, this is all a perception thing, but that, that does make it useful because you, it can help a ripple from a sales perspective when they're reaching out to potential customers. It can affect the way that they are approaching uh, the matter. Anyway, the survey did not target ripple customers. It did, however, weigh uh, responses based on the total in and outflow of remittances at the country level in an effort to have a country mix that represented the addressable market for blockchain in payments. So there you go. I think it's interesting. All right, uh, next here, and uh, this is a tweet, (laughs) and I'm going to be talking about this in a different video. Uh, If you've been on Twitter at all today, you've probably noticed all sorts of new memes as uh, Brad Garlinghouse was interviewed freshly, and uh, he was introduced as Mr. Brad Garlington. So there you go. And here, so he's got a tweet from XRP Twin, at XRP Twin on Twitter. Breaking news, Ripple has a new CEO, Brad Garlington. And then you've got this clip, and this is funny, this is just a 15 second, this is the opening of the entire segment. I'll talk about this more in another video. But you can see she's just giving the quick open there, watching just a couple seconds, look at Brad's face. This is The face is right after he is incorrectly announced. I love that face. Just like freeze frame right there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is just beautiful. All right, uh, next tweet here. This is from Weiss Crypto Ratings, who has sometimes foot in mouth syndrome. Here's the tweet from, from this morning. Some say XRP community transitioning over to XLM would make sense. Who said that? Who 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 said that? Who believes that? What, was it was it Weiss Crypto? Is it somebody on your staff? I haven't heard this. Anyway, and then the tweet continues. XLM has the technological advantage over XRP, but XRP leads in adoption. If the XRP community moved over to XLM, that adoption gap would close. Would you cross over? Well, on that last question, I'm going to say no. I mean, actually, I do hold some some lumens. Uh, That's from back in 2017 when I didn't know, like, anything about crypto, though. Um, Nothing against the project, just to be clear. I'm just saying, you know, uh, ever since I developed my investment thesis, which is that utility matters and will win the day, you know, ever since then, I've been only purchasing XRP because I firmly believe that. So, okay, XLM has the technologic advantage over XRP. What is that? Consider, I want to know what they perceive to be technologically advantageous over XRP because XLM... It's quite literally a copy of the XRP ledger, and I do mean that literally, and then they tweak some stuff. Um, and, and, and <laughs> What are they talking about? And look, and as far as, it's so like one of the most obvious ones, which I've ta- I talked about actually just the other day, because we were talking about how um, Stellar Foundation burned half of their lumens, which I don't like the way it's worded. That's not literally what's true. What happened is they, they put half of their lumens, at the 55 billion, whatever it was, half the, the uh, lumens in existence, they put it into a wallet for which there was no key. That's what they actually did. So they didn't. There was technically no burning. They technically still exist, which actually makes me wonder: Is Life Coinwatch and Coin Market Cap going to uh, reflect that? If they haven't, I haven't checked today. But uh, at the time that that news broke a couple days ago, they had not. But uh, anyway, so technological advantage over XRP. Well, you know what? It depends on what your use case is, because there's certainly utility to having XRP, which is a deflationary um, asset. And with, uh, with with little sh- little shreds of XRP being burnt with every single transaction, that protects against DDoS attacks. Now, uh, I'm I'm not aware of XLM doing that, being capable of that. In fact, I know that XLM, despite the fact that a bunch of it was just burnt, it's inflationary, and more XLM actually can be created. 
New XRP cannot. So it depends on your use case technically, but I would love to know what the hell they think. Is it, I, wait, wait, actually, should I even care? Because <laughs> I mean, where, where does this concept even come from? Some say XRP community transitioning over to XLM. Malarkey! It's a bunch of hoo-ha! I don't believe it. You can tell me what you think, though. Uh, C3 Nick responded, and it was a thoughtful response. Um, XLM has the technological advantage over XRP. And then he writes, please elaborate. Really interested to know what leads you to that conclusion. Thanks. I would love to know as well. Doesn't make a damn bit of sense in Moon Lambo's mind. All right, last piece here. China's President Xi has credentialized cryptocurrency, says Novogratz. Uh, China's President Xi Jinping gave credibility to blockchain and crypto by calling the country to accelerate blockchain adoption, said Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz. The cryptocurrency investor delivered his remarks speaking at the Reuters Global Investment Outlook 2020 Summit in New York on November 5th. Mike, Michael Novogratz, the founder and crypto investment bank at Galaxy Digital and a major Bitcoin bull, believes that the Chinese president's announcement in late October triggered the recent surge in Bitcoin's price. Interesting. By urging China to embrace blockchain technology for the sake of the country, she just credentialized crypto and blockchain, Novogratz stated. On October 24th, uh, she expressed his positive stance on blockchain technology at the Politburo Committee session on blockchain technology trends. Uh, the president emphasized that the adoption of integrated blockchain technologies is key to promoting tech innovation and industry transformation. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fair enough stance. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Okay, so as far as Mike Novogratz goes, typically when I hear statements from him. I generally think that's not too far of an out of there stance. I think that he's pretty well reasoned. He's he's clearly a smart guy. There's there are only certain things that he, when he he utters certain things, it starts to grind my gears. You know things things like that. Well, it's just things that I happen to disagree. I just happen to have a different opinion. Things like uh, you know his his uh, his thought that uh, Bitcoin te technologically doesn't need to be improved, for example. To, to do what it is currently doing, which is nothing. <laughs> well, I say it's nothing. He says store of value. He says, hey, Bitcoin doesn't need to be improved at all. The layer one technology is perfectly sufficient, and people are adopting it for that use case. And to me, I just think it kind of misses the bigger picture as to why people are going to adopt long term. And what does that go back to? Of course, my investment thesis of utility. Anyway. Uh, subsequently, Chinese state publication, the, uh, the People's Daily reported reportedly clarified that Beijing's positive stance on blockchain technology should not be interpreted as support for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. So, uh, Despite the agency's warning on speculation, China has just made another step in favor of cryptocurrencies on November 6 by confirming that Bitcoin mining will not be an undesirable, uh, an undesirable industry in the country, which I may talk a little bit further in another video. That's another thing that was breaking today. There's just too much freaking news. Mostly about Ripple. And I'm still always blown away. If you go to like Daily Hoddle, you can go to AMB Crypto, you know, pick, pick your publication. Go to Tron Weekly, which is named Tron. They're endlessly talking about Ripple and XRP and developers building on top of the XRP ledger. And it's, it's very noticeable. It has picked up pace noticeably. For, I'll tell you what, from when I started this channel in mid-December of last year, the amount of news relating to Ripple and XRP... Uh, the, the, the degree to which it's put at the forefront of, of what I would call uh, mainstream crypto media, if that's a thing, it's, it is really ramped up. It is very, very noticeable. But, uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!